It's a light night tonight in uh, hockey, and all four games are either Central starting or Eastern starting. So hockey will be over relatively early tonight, which is good because you got to rest up because there's 13 games tomorrow. Only four games today and only three games on Sunday. Um, so let's just jump into the action for today. Uh, Carolina is at home against Detroit. So uh, Carolina coming off of a shutout win over Montreal. They're 24-19-8. Detroit's 20-21-8. Detroit is flirting with the idea of getting to 500 tonight. And they are... You know, it's it's one of those things where you look at them and you say, well, they're they're not in the running, but they're not really out out. I don't know. Um, I I I give it a couple of weeks, then we'll be talking about other selling. But for right now, I mean, if Detroit could just somehow put together three or four wins, they can get back into at least the conversation. Uh, and for Carolina, they need to win this one. It's likely Ward and Net again. They haven't said anything about Darling, and apparently they're not going to reveal who the starter is before the game. Uh, Mrazek starting for Detroit, which is a surprise to no one. Uh, Detroit's 4-5-1 in their last 10. Carolina's 5-5-0 in their last 10. Dylan Larkin, the leading scorer for uh, Detroit. 49 games, 8 goals, 30 assists, 38 points. Uh, Tara Vinan's the leading scorer for Carolina. 51 games, 13 goals, 27 assists, 40 points. Tara has turned out to be a very good player. If Aho didn't get hurt, Aho would be number one in scoring, but it is what it is. Um, personally, if I had to make a pick for tonight, I would say because it's on the back half of a back-to-back, -back, I would favor Detroit, but Detroit is so wildly inconsistent, I can't say that with any sort of confidence. Um, and, and that's a, a shame if you're a Detroit fan to hear that. I'm aware of that, but it, again, it, it, is, it is what it is. Um, you know, if Larkin can get a few points and maybe Tatar gets going, if I, I assume he's not hurt. Uh, and if, if my green chips in a point or two here and there while they're showcasing him for a trade, I guess we'll find out tonight. But I, I, I do like Detroit's chances because it's on the back half of a back-to-back -back for Carolina. Next up, um, the Capitals and the Penguins. Do you like PTSD? If you're a Caps fan, it's here tonight. Um, the 13, 30, 15, and 5 Capitals, who are 6-2-2 two, and two in their last 10. In Pittsburgh against the 28-21-3 and three Penguins, who are 8-2 and two in their last 10. Uh, it's probably Murray, probably Holt be in net for the, goal, for the goaltenders. Uh, Ovi's the number one scorer for the Capitals. 50 games, 30 goals, 23 assists, 53 points. Phil Kessel, the number one scorer for the Pittsburgh Penguins. 52 games, 21 goals, 38 assists, 59 points, and he didn't go to the All-Star game. Uh, the Penguins, that 8-2 record in their last 10 is intimidating. They're playing the best hockey of the season right now, and they're at home against Washington. This might sound familiar to Capitals fans, and I'm sorry if this triggers bad memories, but um, the Penguins have been playing some incredible hockey lately. And the Capitals have been playing well, but, again, with the Penguins coming in on the hot streak they're on right now, I don't have a whole lot of faith in, in Washington stopping them tonight. Um, it'll, be, it'll be an interesting one to watch. I'm waiting for Pittsburgh to play like a Toronto or a Tampa or somebody in that, in that ilk and see what happens there because with them playing the way they are right now, Maybe we're going to start getting into that talk. Maybe by the time the playoffs roll around, we're like, well, Pittsburgh's probably going to win their third in a row because they're capable of that. They have so many star players. They have so many weapons. And while Washington has a ton of weapons, they have a very impressive lineup and an impressive record, it is hard to get around the fact that Washington's history for the last 30 years has been filled with disappointments against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So again, um, this might be a PTSD kind of moment for Washington Capitals fans, and I apologize. So let us go ahead and move on to the next um, game of the night. Vegas, 34-12-4 in Minnesota against the Wild, 27-18-5. Both Vegas and the Wild are 6-2-2 two, two in their last 10. I'm going to say that Subban probably starts tonight because Flurry started last night. Dubnik is starting for the Minnesota Wild. Of course, Stalock's been putting up better stats than Dubnik lately, and you have to wonder how short a leash Dubnik might be on. March or so, uh, 47 games, 18 goals, 30 assists, 48 points. He's the leading scorer for Vegas. 
The leading scorer for Minnesota, Eric Stahl, 50 games, 20 goals, 23 assists, 43 points. Uh, rumors of his demise from a year and a half ago were greatly exaggerated. Um, and, and for Minnesota, it's funny because now, now the Ducks are in that playoff spot, right? And the Flames, even though they're on this, this slide right now, the Flames are going to be solid. Um, now the, the Avalanche have a wild card spot. The, the, the Stars have a wild card spot. The Stars are trying to close in on St. Louis for that number three spot in the Central. Notice Minnesota's getting lost in the shuffle again. And that's, that's going to be an issue going forward. Um, you know, for Vegas, they're, they're, they're first and they've got 72 points right now. They're absolutely anybody in the world that thinks, oh, Vegas is going to miss the playoffs. You're out of your minds. There's no way. Uh, if Vegas wins 11 games, the rest of the way, they make the playoffs. I'd give them 94 points. And, and that would, that would project to make the playoffs. I just, and I can't see that happening. They've been playing so well. Their team game is so solid. Uh, they don't get rattled and, Let's say they don't re-sign James Neal and they trade him off. There are enough offensive weapons in Vegas that it's not going to make a big difference. And I do think James Neal stays, and I do think James Neal re-signs in Vegas. And he might even give them a little bit of a discount because I think he's really enjoying it there, as everyone in Vegas seems to be. When a team is having fun playing together, it shows, and it very often leads to wins where you otherwise probably wouldn't have them. And uh, they do have they have great synergy throughout their lineup. Um, I I really can't think of a weak spot. And tonight Minnesota is going to try to test that because Vegas is on the back half of a back to back. Minnesota didn't play last night, so Minnesota should essentially win this game. They're at home. They're they're more rested than the opposition, and they're they're supposed to be a very good team. And uh, the Minnesota Wild should be in contention for that playoff spot right up till the last weekend of the year. This is the time to, to win a game that they need to because uh, they don't want to end up falling further back. Colorado, even though they had they had a bit of a bobble with those three losses in a row, I don't think Colorado is going to fall off the pace. I don't think Dallas is going to fall off the pace. So for Minnesota, they have to keep pace. There's no way around it. All right, and last but not least, San Jose and Columbus. Uh, San Jose 26, 16, and 8. Martin Jones is starting for them. They're 5, 3, and 2 in their last 10. Brent Burns is the leading scorer for San Jose. 50 games played, 8 goals, 34 assists, 42 points. And I've been, been bringing him up a lot because if you'll notice, his points totals are going up. His goal totals are getting better. He is going to end up being in that conversation for vet, for, for <laughs> almost said Vesna, for, for the Norris by the end of the year. Um, for Columbus, 27, 19, and 4. They're 5, 4, and 1 in their last 10. Bobrovsky's the likely starter. And Panarin is their leading scorer. 13 goals in 50 games, 41 points overall. Panarin's been a solid addition, outscoring what I think Saad would have done there. I don't know that Panarin's given them as much scoring as they probably would have wanted. Uh, but he's played well, and uh, Columbus, in general, their scoring has been down. So maybe they'll all get together and, and start playing better soon, and, and their scoring will go up. Who knows? But either way, they're still in the running. San Jose's still in the running. Of course, San Jose's second in the division, but Anaheim's getting close, and I'm sure they're aware of it. Um and LA's still out there looking about trying to blow their season, but who knows? Maybe they'll they'll turn it around too. And the Flames, who are doing their best to lose games that they 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 should win, when they have a lead, Calgary's blown a lot of leads over the last week and two weeks actually. Um, so San Jose needs to go in and win this one tonight. I personally would say Columbus probably wins it, but that's just my opinion. Let me know your opinion on tonight's games. Which one you're most looking forward to? Uh, personally, if I had to choose, it'd be Pittsburgh and Washington because those games are always spirited and fun. Always. Uh, yes, Washington tends to suffer at the hands of the Penguins more often than not, but they're fun games to watch. So, thank you very much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, that guy's probably starting for Pittsburgh tonight. It's February. So, thank you very much for watching. Happy Groundhog Day, and I'll talk to you again soon.